exciting game. <laughs> we like to make it interesting. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. That was fun. I, I tell you, early on, having some games like that, that's good. Good for your kids to go through that. We have three non-district games. It's a good opportunity to do some growing. And when they're tough, you know, like we said before, you don't want to play easy games. You want to play something that challenges you. Uh, that team was very senior-led, difficult offense to stop. Well, they had a handful of really strong senior kids that were difficult to, uh, you know, for us to get control of early on. And down 14 points at halftime, a lot of times kids will just bow out. Uh, so it was nice to see our kids go in at halftime, keep it together, come out with a plan and execute it and just keep doing what we're doing. We're not going to ever be somebody we're not. We're going to keep having to be who we are. And we felt if we could keep doing what we were doing, make a few adjustments, that eventually we would get them, and we did. Offensively, uh, we were missing a couple of our assignments. Uh, they were slanting a guy across our tight end, and that was causing some problems, and we were blocking down and leaving that guy and letting him penetrate. We weren't getting the push that we should have had. Uh, so we got that fixed. Uh, defensively, uh, lining upright, which is one of our number one things that we work on is getting lined upright. A few of the busts that we had that they got big plays on were us being lined up incorrectly. We knew that. We knew that we made a few adjustments to get lined upright, that we'd be in a lot better position in the second half we were. Amen. Yeah, just, we, we were not, uh, we weren't focused. We weren't zoned in on, uh, and it wasn't even, it's really pre-play. They come out in the formation, we're lined up wrong. I mean, that doesn't spell success. That's the number one thing we talk about is first line up right. Uh, and we, we didn't do it. So um, you can't have success when you can't do the, ver the, the number one thing that you asked them to do. So, but one, like we said, uh, we, you know, we have Barrett who made a bunch of mistakes in the first half. But what I like about Barrett is he makes a terrible mistake. He gives up a touchdown pass. That he doesn't, he didn't dwell on it. He wasn't, he doesn't get upset with himself or anything like that. He just goes and plays the next play and makes a really good play on a, on a sweet play, to their, to their big speed back mm -hmm. and keeps them out of the end zone again and saves us two points. So, we, uh, we have the right attitude. We and there, we know sometimes we make mistakes, but they they show up and play the next play, and so uh, we limited the same kind of mental pre-snap mistakes uh, and then our kids played hard and we made we made some plays so unanswered points or yeah for the 22 yeah it was 14 nothing at halftime we were on a pretty low low uh, what we do is we're not a big uh, especially me I'm not a real raw raw tear you down get after you type of person I'm going to build you up. I'm going to teach you what I need you to know. So when we went in at halftime, uh, Coach Kendall started going over the defensive mistakes, which we knew, getting lined up right. He had already made some adjustments of where you're supposed to be, uh, and a couple of times we weren't where we were supposed to be, and they got some big plays and gashed us. It's actually a couple of big plays I can think of, and one of them being the touchdown pass, was we were simply not lined up correctly. So he knew where they needed to be lined up, and he went over that with them. Uh, we have the uh, sideline huddle where we can go over all the plays. And with me being involved offense and defense now, I don't get to review those plays as much as I like. One of our assistants goes over the plays and will show them to me. But when I get at halftime, I could scroll through plays real quickly uh, and see exactly what they were doing. And then once he got done talking about the defense, I explained, here's the situation. Here's what the guy is doing to you. Here's what we're not doing. and this is what we have to do when we go back out there. So we were fairly calm with them. Uh, you don't want to beat them down when you're already down 14 to nothing. You have to find a medium of motivating, but not driving them into the ground so that they come out down. And I thought we talked to them. We taught them what needed to be done. Let's get back out there. Let's get after these guys. We are in shape. We know we're in shape. We've worked hard all summer long. We work hard all week long. We're going to keep going. They're going to wear down. So 
we just keep going and they eventually wore down. Uh, the adjustments that we had were just to some of their, to some of their motion. Uh, we thought we had pretty good game plan to start with. Uh, but the big thing is just making sure that we had the outside sealed off. <clears throat> and uh, so it was just little tiny things about alignment. Uh, but in the first half, we made so many mistakes. I mean, just we we couldn't get lined up right. Um, you know, we have a young linebacker that made a few mistakes that cost us a big touchdown. And then we have a, a kid that usually doesn't make mental mistakes uh just make a just a big big bad mistake getting us lined up exactly opposite of how we wanted to be uh and just let leave a guy open on a touchdown pass so uh but we went in and we said listen the game plan's not bad it's a go when we do it right when we're lined up right we're we're getting stops we're getting we're making good plays when you don't line up right and you're overrunning stuff and we, we look like crap so it just it's very simple like do what we taught you to do and it's going to work uh you know and we talked to our defensive linemen about you know we kind of lost who we were a little bit we were standing up we we're getting uh washed out and then in the second half we we put in xavier barber and he played low and did exactly what we asked him to do he made a lot of good plays and allowed our linebackers to go run and make plays and that. It was so, I mean, it's such simple stuff. It's as simple as just, hey, we talked about what we wanted to do. You just haven't done it. Um, and so at halftime, we said, just do what we talked about doing. Follow the game plan, and we're going to be fine. And they, and that's what happened. So. <laughs> and it looked like right from the beginning of the third quarter. We came right back out. They were getting the ball, and we knew they were getting the ball. We knew that was the time, hey, you better make a stand right here. If we're going to get back in this thing, we need to do it now. So when you get out there, be ready. Get lined up right. And I think we've, we may not have been a three and out, but we got the ball back fairly quickly. Yeah. Drove, did our thing, got down, punched it in. And then wasn't it special teams again? We kicked the ball, bounce it off somebody, get the ball back. Now you just swung the momentum. Doesn't matter you're down 14-6. The momentum is back in our court. We have the ball again. We just drove it down your throat. Watch out. Here we come. So... Then we went down, tied it up, and then we had to play defense again, and we were we were clicking then. We're back in the game, motivation was there, the kids were back up. Now we knew we just gotta do what we do. We knew there's still enough time for them to run the ball. Uh, and so on first and second down, that's really what we're worried about. Uh, but I think on first, I can't remember if it was first or second down, we got a big sack that put them second and 15 or third and 15 and then it was like okay we, we're gonna back off a little bit um and uh, we have a back we're so, we're so aggressive most of the time that he said hey if you need a timeout right here call it and so we called it we we said hey listen we're gonna loosen up big time don't let anything behind you the uh, only thing that can hurt us right here is something deep we, we have 15 yards to work with and uh, you know our, our kids stay behind everything and just forced them into some bad throws. So, um, but we're getting we're getting really better at uh, you know that uh, Kale McPeak, uh, our Mike linebacker, who's a really really young guy and inexperienced. He uh, he really made two or three just fantastic sacks. Uh, the transition or the you know kind of the transformation that he's made from scrimmage number one uh, to two to scrimmage two to game one to game two is it's crazy how much better he's gotten and it's just uh, one of those things where you say okay young guy still doesn't know what he's doing yet we make an adjustment and he's soaking up the adjustment and, and realizing oh well if I do it like they're teaching me it's so much easier uh, and then man him making those sacks fit right into what we're doing uh, he's he's learning uh, seems like every day and getting a lot better so he made a lot of plays um, I, I don't know if it's like the physicality uh, the difference of physicality moving from being an eighth grader to a freshman that he he looks like he starts games a little slow and he starts he's kind of figuring out that the guy across from him will come smack him in the mouth and once he figures it out oh, okay I better just do what I'm supposed to do but he's starting he's starting to figure it out uh, being very impressed with him uh, and then Caleb Bleeding Fox uh, I, I mean I think he's our best defensive player there is, I, I 
so far we haven't seen anybody who can get him blocked consistently every play. Uh, I mean, whether it's stopping power and counter or it's on the pass rush, he, he so far, and there's, I mean, there's always somebody that's going to be a little bit better somewhere. Uh, but right now, he's the best defensive end I've seen this year out of the, you know, handful, six, seven, eight teams that we've seen. So he's the, he, he can't be blocked if he decides he's yeah. going to go. And so uh, he, he, those two guys made, uh, he, they made our night as far as, uh, you know, the second half went. They, they played really well and made a bunch of plays. So. Well, it's when it starts to turn like that, you can start to see it in a game where you start to get going again, and now you're back in it because it's easy to be down fourteen nothing and feel completely out of it. We, you know, we'd had a bunch, we'd had some drives that we were going in that first half, and then we would stub our toe or get a penalty or something would happen to us. Uh, so when you get that momentum swinging back in your favor, then you got to not get from the coaching side of it. We got to get not too excited. Make sure that we keep everything going according to plan, keep the kids level-headed, and get them in the right positions, and then you let them just go. And it, it, it's fun to see, uh, you know, you see your kids grow up a lot in situations like that. And like I said, three non-district games, this is where you want to do some growing. We're young. I've only got one, two people on that offense that are in the same position they were last year. Uh, one senior at fullback, and Elijah, who came in due to an injury last year uh, at uh, our right tackle, those are the only two people in the same spot. The rest of that offense is uh, new to those spots. So we have a bunch of juniors, two sophomores in the backfield and a junior that weren't starters in that offense. So and I was telling them this today, guys, you have to get gelled together and it takes a while that offense that was blowing people out and rolling all over people in the end of the playoffs had played a lot of plays together last year and they grew together uh, this group has just those two people in the same spots so it takes a little while for that to gel i think three four games down the road it's going to be a machine and they will understand all the different things and the communication. And a lot of it is communication. You have to talk to your partner. You have to work with him. And if you don't have a guy that's there that's been doing it for a couple of years, then your partner's kind of quiet. <laughs> you don't have the communication. But each week it'll get better. And then that, that thing will really get going. Uh, Meeker has a really good quarterback. Um, he's a scrambling type of guy. He, uh, when plays break down, he's a guy that's going to go make plays. So uh, we focused on making sure our pass rush is very disciplined. Uh, we don't let him out of the pocket uh, and don't let him extend plays. Um, they have a back that's a pretty good back when they decide they're going to consistently run the football, uh, but they do throw it a lot. So uh, more than the last two weeks, we're going to be tested coverage wise. And, uh, but I think our kids are up to the challenge. We've had a good week of practice in the secondary. So, uh, you know, we're, we're expecting to uh, play well on defense again, give ourselves a chance to. What's not changing? What's oh, everything's changing. Meeker runs the spread. Whew, no more triple option, no more wing T. We get what we have been designing the defense to play. Uh, now it presents different problems. They are athletes in space running the spread, which is what people do. Uh, and what we need to get really good at defensively. So it will present some different challenges, but when you play teams that are not run physical teams, like we are a lot of times, they're finesse teams and slinging a ball around, the quarterback running everywhere. It's a different type of atmosphere. And one that we've taken advantage of a lot of teams in that situation, like when we went to Commerce last year, they're a very good spread team. They slinging around all over the place and our offense beat those guys up. And that's what, that's what you have an opportunity to do when you play a finesse type of team. Now, they're good and they're talented and they've got a senior quarterback who can throw the ball a mile and can run all over the place. So we're gonna have to contain them, but they, it's not a systematic offense where this play sets up that play and you have to have assignment rules like the triple option. Now we can line up and kind of get after, get after it, which is what we've been teaching our kids to do since spring. 
So we're, we're excited. I, I'm ready to get done with wing tees and triple option. <laughs> Let's play the spread, which we're going to see a lot of. Uh, and get our kids used to that. And I'm glad we have one more non-district game where they'll get a chance to play that type of team. Oh, it, it's it's huge, it's it's huge. Uh, speaking of community support, we have uh, one of our uh, coach's wives does all our laundry. And the washing machine we have is just horrible. And so she went on Facebook the other day and said, hey, we need a new washing machine so I can keep these kids clothes clean in the football program. And within two or three days, she had collected all the money, new washing machines hooked up, rocking and rolling. And I'm just going, wow. And I saw her put a Facebook post on there thanking all the community and everything. And I that is just, that's awesome. But there's been a ton of that. Ever since I've been involved with this, uh, I've seen, you know, I'm not used to being in this position, uh, so I haven't dealt with the community and stuff like that before, but there has been so much help, and that, that's great. Because like I said before, there's four, five, six coaches, and we're trying to coach kids and do laundry. Nobody wants me doing the laundry. <laughs> so, you know, it's great to have people step up. You know, we don't want to paint the field. The kids need to be getting rested, getting ready for their Thursday night meal, not out there painting the field. So it, it's so helpful to have some people step up and help us with this type of stuff. And, and the support's been unbelievable. Whatever. Uh, well, we had there was a lot of people that were gone and stuff, but we had, we had some people show up. They're redoing the field tomorrow. Uh, so we're hoping to get a lot of people uh, to come help so that we can turn that over to a group of painters and the kids won't have to be out there. And what does it mean? Thank you very much, Pawnee. I appreciate this. Our kids appreciate it. Uh, we could not do this and we could not run this program as effective as we want without all the support. It's just not possible. This is a great program and it just gets better every single day. And that's thanks a lot to the community and the school and the people that are stepping up and helping. Man, it's, it'll be, uh, we're going to put a product out there that's competitive. We have, our kids are playing hard, and they are very excited about finally getting to play at home. We spent the last four weeks on the road, and uh, we're really excited about being here. Our kids play with a different energy while they're here, um, and you as a fan can really help us by showing up on Friday night. Uh, I, I'll be really honest and say the advantage a great crowd gives and the energy uh, with our kids can really feed off of that. Uh, so, you know, if you're thinking about coming, show up, man, we really, we, we'd love for you to be there. Uh, and uh, our kids need it. Uh, they've been killing themselves since May, uh, you know, wanting to put together the best season they can put together. And uh, you guys with your donations and your hard work and your help uh, have been awesome. And this is just one more step to that, showing up, cheering us on. Um, so we hope you're there, and uh, go Bears.